And good evening, everybody, and welcome once again to the video sports page. Along with Matt Willett, Will McKinney, and Rich Goulart, I'm your host, Carl Pratt, as we bring you our local sports program once again this week, edition number 1131, produced at the Carver Community Access Television Station. As we continue with our program this week, let's give you our lineup. Let's tell you that we're going to share an interview with Eagles head soccer coach Dennis Azevedo. He's back in the fold after a 13-year absence, did some other things professionally. Now he's back surrounded by the game he so much enjoys. Not too long ago, I had an opportunity to spend some time around the Boston Celtics as they had media day. There were lots of different figures around there, including Lyndon Byers, who played for the Bruins. Lyndon works with WAAF Radio, and I had an opportunity to have a conversation with him. We'll share with that with you tonight. And I even had a chance to spend some time with KG. How about 5'5", five five Carl Pratt and KG at 6'11"? We got it done, though. We made it work. And also on this week's edition of our show, I'll show you a touchdown by Michael Silva. Now, what makes it interesting is Michael plays for the Silver Lake Warriors, and their youth football program is undefeated. All it meant for Michael through four games, his 16th touchdown of the season. Let's begin our program, however, by telling you how would you like to be the Dennis Yarmouth girls soccer team. They went up against Plymouth North this week in Plymouth South and lost by a combined score of 15 to nothing. The Plymouth South Panthers rolled up an impressive 7 nothing victory. They've got a decent season working right now as the schedule nears the midway point. They're 5-3-1. Meanwhile, the Plymouth North program rolled up an 8-0 victory against D.Y. earlier this week on the new state-of-the-art AstroTurf on the campus of Plymouth North High School. And following that game, the Plymouth North program had a 1-1 draw with Sandwich. Always some big battles with Sandwich. So Coach Azevedo's team in the Atlantic Coast League is 5-1-1. They're 7-2-1 overall. Well, I had an opportunity to speak with head coach Dennis, Dennis Azevedo prior to the matchup with D.Y. Let's call on Will behind the scenes to roll that interview. Let's spend some time with veteran coach Dennis Azevedo, who's back directing the Plymouth North Girls Varsity Soccer Program after a 13-year absence. And i got to ask you, same old success for you. You left with great success many years ago. You've picked right up where you left off. Carl, thank you very much. Uh, you know, Mr. Foley did a great job of continuing that success. And these girls are used to winning. They're used to working hard, putting the time in. And it's a pleasure to work with them. Well, you obviously get off to a great start, but then you face two quality opponents and you're on the short end. But it makes you step back for a minute and tell the girls, hey, don't get too carried away with your early season success. Yeah, that also in the fact that it's okay to be disappointed but not discouraged. We played two very good teams who have a combined record of 13-1. and one. And we played them on their fields. So we played two very good teams in away matches, and we lost one to nothing. So disappointed, yes, but I'm not discouraged. In fact, I'm encouraged that we've got a chance to play at least Marshfield home next time here on our turf, different game, and hopefully a different result. Well, back many years ago when you had great success with the run in the Atlanta Coast League opposite Duxbury, you had goal scorers like Jackie Blanchard and Nicole Dyers, to name a couple. And you also had Caroline Sheeran. And then in the net, you had Becky Woolman. You've got similar players here with this team leading your success. Very much so. Uh, you know, the, the person that drives the engine here is uh, Franny Lapsley, our center midfielder. She works extremely hard. Uh, and then up front, our goal scorer is uh, Maddie Finley who does a real nice job. She's leading the league with nine goals. And uh, in the net, we have Megan Walsh, who's a first-year goalkeeper, but an outstanding athlete, physical presence in the goal. All right, let's talk quickly, if you can. You're coaching on AstroTurf now, okay? And you're going to have more than half your games on AstroTurf. That wasn't the case many years ago. That's correct. Uh, we, <laughs> we played in a lot of places back then, Kyle. Uh, very often, we were up top here. Uh, playing on a field that we had to pick the rocks up for 10 minutes before we played the game. So to have a beautiful facility like this, uh, you know, I thank the town of Plymouth and uh, certainly the girls are benefiting from that opportunity. Talk if we can, though, when you work on your dribbling skills during practice. It's a, such a true bounce for the girls when you're playing on AstroTurf. Absolutely. You get a, a real true role, a true bounce. 
The girls can run unencumbered. You're not worried about stepping in a hole and, and turning your ankle over. It's a beautiful, beautiful surface to play on. You've always wanted your teams in shape. They always were in shape. But because of the speed of the game, did you put a little more emphasis on that this fall than in the past where you are on AstroTurf and good legs might take you? Uh, I wouldn't say more of an emphasis. It's just that uh, I think the game, you play the game at a little bit faster pace. All right, how about some of the teams? Are you surprised year after year it's Plymouth North, year after year it's Marshfield, it's Situate, teams like that. Those were the same teams that had success many years ago. Absolutely, Marshfield's very strong, Situate, Duxbury. The teams that have historically been strong continue to be strong. Well, listen, we appreciate your time. We're down here at Plymouth North High School. This afternoon, you take on DY. Keep it rolling. Thank you very much, Kyle. You bet. Head coach Dennis Azevedo joining us during the video sports page this week. His Eagles opposite DY this afternoon. Talk about some other area high school activities. More specifically, let's talk about the golf program over in Pembroke, okay? A couple of impressive victories this week, including a 51 and a half to 20 and a half victory over Middleborough. Our program, of course, you know by now does go to Pembroke, so we want to talk about the Titans golf team, which is now posting an impressive record of 10 and 2 on the season, 8 and 2 overall. There was also a victory this week against Situate, 42 to 30, and that particular effort, Dan Regas had a 1 over 37 to lead his team. He was the medalist for that effort. And you want to talk about golf, let's talk about Duxbury's golf program. 11 and 1 on the season. All right, Duxbury had a 238 to 250 victory over Hingham. And on the heels of that, Duxbury handed Hanover its first loss of the season. Final there, 234 to 241. First loss of the season for Hanover. Duxbury continues to impress. We always talk about Duxbury sports because it doesn't matter what sport, they're having great success. And let me throw one more Duxbury stat at you. How about the field hockey program? An 8-0 victory this week against Pembroke. All that means is Duxbury's field hockey team is a perfect 10-0. Well, I told you at the top I covered media day for the Boston Celtics. There was another media representative there that I spent some time with. From WAAF Radio, Lyndon Bias once played for the Boston Bruins for many years, and now he's enjoying his time on the other side of the glass. Let's call on our guys behind the scenes. Matt Willett skewed up our interview. Hi, good evening, and let's continue with this week's edition of the Video Sports Page. I'm Carl Pratt from WAAF. And I'm Lyndon Byers from Cab Sports. All right, let's really get focused here. We're going to get our signal straight here, but this is Lyndon Byers, and he's out here working the Celtics Media Day. Hey, these were the guys that took the gym when you, well, the ice, uh, took the facility when you weren't playing with the Bruins. Yeah, I was, you know, it was uh, an amazing time when I played. As you well know, uh, the Celtics were on a roll when, when the Bruins were on a roll, and, and uh, Kevin McHale and, and Larry and a lot of the guys uh, I was friends uh, with, we, we, we used to go to a lot of their games. They used to came, come to a lot of our games, and a uh, quick note, well, uh, I think uh, Chris Nyland, Knuckle, Knuckles Nyland in 1992, broke his this ankle the while the, uh, the seas here. court was down this in the, the garden. And, uh, that, that was a no-no. We were supposed to not play hoops. This, <laughs> well, we shouldn't. We're too short. There you go. Talk, if you can, how come you stayed in this area after your hockey days? You got involved with the media. You became a fan favorite almost overnight. I, I, you know what? This area is uh, amazing. The people are amazing. The fans are amazing. And I think uh, the fact that... Uh, probably 80 or 90 alumni. Uh, a lot of the guys that I played with back in the 80s and 90s uh, still live here. We all have families, and uh, it's a great community. We built a community uh, around our lives, and, and now we get, you know, for me, Everything I everything I have in my life I owe to the Boston Bruins, the Boston area, New England, and I it's just a great opportunity for me to give back and let them know that uh, I didn't ever take it for granted. So, who was that first bigger than life figure for you in hockey when you grew up? I'm not talking about that you used to watch or hear about right. like in or everybody likes so, but when you finally stepped on the ice when you made it to the pros, I'm not saying your first game, but all of a sudden you looked down and you said, "Wow, that's so and so warming up. I'm on the same ice as this guy." <laughs> well. There, there's two, two, two times that I was uh, bl blown away. Uh, the year I got drafted, Bobby Orr brought uh, Gord Kluzak. Gordy was taking first overall in 82. I was taking 39th overall in 82, and he took us to his house when we came to Boston to sign our contracts for a barbecue, took us up to his office, signed a stick, gave us a little talk, and I was pretty blown away. And the other time after that was we played uh, – 
we played, uh, I ended up playing against Clark Gillies, and Clark Gillies was, uh, he played for the Regina Pats, I played for the Regina Pats, he was a right winger before me, I was a right winger after him, he was a big tough guy that got some goals, I was a big tough guy for the Pats that got some goals, so, uh, you know, when I, get, when I got on the ice with Clark Gillies, it was pretty amazing that I, you know, uh, in one sense, I'm, I, you know, I, it took my breath away. In another sense, it's uh, I, I got to run them through the board. So uh, it was pretty cool. I talk if you can, because you were known as the tough guy. You sure. were known more as a fighter than a scorer. You were known. Hey, people, wait a there second. you go. But you know what Come I mean. Come on, but, Carl. There you go. But people really didn't know your personality, and they don't get a chance to talk to you like I do. Obviously, it's several years later since you laced them up, but. Was there a misconception about Lyndon Byers, do you think? No, no, ne never. I'm, I've always been a happy-go-lucky guy, a big teddy bear. Uh, I was always a great team guy. My life changed, uh, you know, my hockey career changed due to injury. Uh, my hockey career changed due to, due to a lifestyle. I was a little bit of a hard partier, and that hurt me when I got hurt. Um, you know, I had, to, I had to pick and choose. I broke... I blew my knee out and then broke my wrist my first two years and played about 40 out of the 160 games I was supposed to play. And I found myself in Moncton and Terry O'Reilly took over as coach and I said, uh, I'm going to fight the t uh, three toughest guys on every team for the next 10 games. If I don't get, get called up, I'm going to quit. So thank you, Terry O'Reilly. I got called up after the third game. I lose in my mind uh, nine fights and after my ninth fight and a little bit of mayhem, Taz called me up and uh, the Jay Miller LB era began. <laughs> so it was, uh, uh, you know, I'm very grateful grateful to Taz and I'm grateful to the Bruins. I talk if you can. My guest this week, as you can tell from our graphic, Lyndon Byers, formerly with the Bruins, now with WAAF Radio. Talk about the Boston area, how it's not just Bruins fans, Celtics fans, Patriots. You know what I mean? This is a crazy area, isn't it? It, it truly is. And I think with the success that uh, all the teams have had over the last uh, decade, you know, through the through the 2000s and in and, and the late 90s, uh, with the Sox winning, you know, their first two World Series, uh, the Patriots basically dominating the NFL and uh, I mean the ownerships and the, and the teams and the players the Celtics winning a championship with KG and all the guys the Bruins winning a Stanley Cup with a great organization run by former players and, and Peter Shirelli and and uh, I think the ownership combined with uh, quality executives that care about the community that believe in the community just as much as the community believes in them that's what makes this place uh, sports heaven and there's not another there's not another city another area another range anywhere in the world that can uh, that can come close to the Boston sports scene and the sports teams it's awesome All right, before I let you sneak away how yeah. recognizable are you now I mean now you go out to areas for the radio station sure. sure they know you but when you played for the Bruins could you go anywhere where somebody didn't do a double take and said geez I think that's so and so well I, I think for us we could probably hide a little bit better than the guys now. The, the whole world's changed with, with social media and every, everybody has a TV camera in their phone. And uh, so it's crazy. Athletes have to live a different world than we lived back in the day. Uh, we were a little wilder, a little crazier, but we, we kind of, you know, we were there and then we got, kind of got here. We played both, both sides of the, the tracks. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, I, I've been lucky. I, I, I tell everybody my life's been a gift. I, I played for the Bruins for, for 10 years and, and I got to do radio with AF for 16. So let's see, 26 years. I haven't worked a day in my life, Carl. Things are good. <laughs> there you go. Things are good. All right, so what would I say? When you die, do you want to come back as you, or is there somebody you'd like to be in their shoes or skates? Uh, Elvis Presley. Who doesn't want to come back as Elvis? All right, well, guess what? But you, young, I, want, I want young, skinny Elvis. Yeah, is that, can go. I say that? Yeah, not okay. the Las Vegas guy. No, I don't want the bloating. Las Vegas guy. I, I'm him now. See, I, I'm the old Vegas office now. There you go. Well, listen, you were the king for today. Tell you what, we really appreciate it. I was watching you roam around in this environment with the Celtics, and I'm saying, check out Lyndon Byers, the former Bruin. Oh, out there. But you look like you're, you're having fun, though. I have a ball. I, I love I love Boston. I love the Celtics. I'm a huge sports fan of all the teams in town. Uh, I go to all the games. I watch all the games, and obviously you know, the Bruins are near and dearest to my heart, but uh, it's a big thrill for me to be able to walk in the same place with Paul Pierce, KG, uh, Rondo to see the young guys like uh, Fab Mello and, and those guys starting off their career. I know the, how I know how they felt. I know how this first media day feels. And, uh, how do so you think I felt? You saw me interviewing <laughs> KG. I'm 5'5". Five, five. This guy's 6'11", but he gave me time. He's so cool. Of course he is. KG's the best. That's what makes, these, that's what makes champions. Uh, you, you ask any, uh, any writer in here uh, that follows the Celtics, they'll tell you they've, they've covered teams uh, you know, for decades, and the teams that win championships are teams that have good guys that get it, that uh, respect the game, and re and respect that they're they're not bigger than the game. And KG is one of the finest examples of that. So 
it's uh, it's a great day for everybody, man, huh? It certainly is. Well, here's the deal. I've always enjoyed you watching you as a Boston Bruin, but I've enjoyed visiting with you more. It's been fun. It's been a blast. And awesome. you kind of like what I like to do. Just be loose and enjoy life. 100%, Carl. Great to see you. Thank you, my friend. Right, this buddy. is Lyndon Byers joining us this week. Okay, oh. Kyle Pratt from WAAF. And <laughs> Lyndon Byers from Cap Sports. We'll continue with more, so stay with us. Okay, as we continue with this week's edition of the video sports page, once again, I'm your host, Carl Pratt. Our program comes your way every Thursday night at 730, and then we repeat this program on Sunday nights at 10 o'clock. And we want to tell you that also on Sunday nights at 730, we have a program called Flashback. We go back, as you know by now, we're up to 1,100-plus shows. We pull two or three from the archives, and we share them with you. You'll see some of your friends and maybe coaches. When they were athletes, you kind of get the story. So if you want to see some more in local sports. And on Tuesday nights, we have a program called High School Football Recap that we track down the area high school teams, couple of youth teams, and bring you up to date with that. How about a quick note about head coach John Laverty's cross-country teams at Plymouth North? A couple of impressive victories this week as the Eagles girls team had a three, uh, their third victory of the season in four tries. They won it 20-37 to over Falmouth. The boys are a perfect 4-0, a 19-39 to victory. That also against Falmouth. So head coach Laverty's teams, a combined record of 7-1, and and they're not even at the halfway point in the schedule. Well, at media day for the Boston Celtics, what a thrill for yours truly. I had an opportunity to catch up with the big guy, the big ticket as they like to call him. KG and I had a few minutes. Let's call on our guys to roll that. Filming that. What's your name? My name's Kyle. Hi there, buddy. How you doing? Where you Good. from, man? I'm Plymouth. Plymouth, Mass, man. Oh, okay, yeah. Where the rock and the main Yeah, 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 okay. All right. This week on the video sports page, five foot four, Kyle Pratt spending some time with KG, six foot eleven. We appreciate your time, brother. You're always smiling. You don't like just basketball. You love life. I love life. I'm enjoying myself. Um, you know, me today. You know, you can't take it too serious. You got to have some type of fun, or you, know, you find yourself uh, being um, upset. So, I like to come in here, relax. You know, meet meet some of the short people. You need some height? Let me know. I seen some height. You know, but other than that, yeah, I'm having a good time. Do me a favor, KG. Talk about how good basketball's been to you in your entire life and your family. It's allowed you to have so many good things for you and your family. Basketball's been uh, always been there for me. As a kid, uh, growing up in the South, uh, I've always um, dealt with problems differently. Obviously, we all do. Um, but for the most part, when I've ever, whenever I needed it, it's always been there for me. And um, to this day, I've I've always reached out and. I don't know, I'm getting a little sentimental yeah, here. You've been blessed. No, I'm, I've definitely been blessed, but more importantly, uh, I've been able to show the world a creative side of me through the game. So I'm unfortunate. Tell me how you really embrace the fans. Once they embrace you, you go home, you kick your feet up. How you've become such a cult hero with these Boston fans, seriously. The Boston fans are just as crazy as I am. Uh, I play hard, I give everything I have. And you know, if you know anything about you know the Bostonians, they're, they're pretty much that. And um, they're very loyal people. And uh, it's very parallel to myself. So, give a quick message to the people watching my show. Somebody like me comes up to you. I'm five foot five. You're six eleven. You gave me time. Why did you give a guy like me time who you've never met before? Because you had a mic and you asked, and you seem to be respectful. And that's all you can ask these days. I really appreciate your time, but I, you know what? I enjoy your game, but I enjoyed visiting with you more. Really appreciate your time. That's what's up. Good luck to you, you and your show, man. Thank you, my man. All this right. is KG joining us this week on the video sports page. All right, as we continue with this week's edition of the video sports page, we have an opportunity to share with you some youth football highlights. Okay, we're going to pause them. We're going to show them to you again in a moment. All right, that's the Silver Lake Warriors. But going back to that KG interview, one of many people that will have an opportunity to share with you as the weeks move along. Got an opportunity to spend some time with a lot of those rookies like Selinger, like uh, Fab Mello from Syracuse as well. So you might find those interesting on our program. Before we show you that youth football highlights, let's talk quickly about the high school programs in our area. More specifically, let's talk about Duxbury. Duxbury's riding a 30-game win streak as they go up against Zavarian this weekend. And Zavarian doesn't sound right, 
their record, one and three. But indeed, that's the case right now. So Duxbury will go up against Zaverian this weekend trying to extend its winning streak. How about the play of John Hurwitz? What a season he's having so far. All this young man does is average 7.6 yards a carry, okay, 434 yards rushing through the first four games, and that includes 10 touchdowns. Pembroke will go up against Olive Rames this weekend. The Pembroke Titans and Olive Rames met a year ago in the semifinals heading towards a high school Super Bowl berth. So it is a rematch, Pembroke with victory on its mind. Plymouth North will travel down to the Cape to take on Dennis Yarmouth. Plymouth South will be home against Falmouth. And the Carver Crusaders will be looking for its first win of the season. Tough loss last week for Carver. Okay, five minutes to go in the football game. And Carver was leading 17-6, but couldn't hold on. All right, it's an opportunity now to go back to those highlights. We gave you a quick sneak preview. It's the Silver Lake Warriors program. All right, an impressive victory against visiting Middleborough last week at home. Roger Silva's the head coach, the star player for the team, his son Michael. Let's take this opportunity to show you one of 16 touchdowns on the season by Michael Silva. Okay, the Silver Lake Warriors with a very impressive victory at the midget level. And how about coming up this week? Silver Lake will go up against Duxbury, both teams of 4 0. Now, the very successful coach for the Duxbury Boys varsity team is Dave Mamron. Dave also helps out with the midget level program over in Duxbury, where his son is the quarterback. So it should be a very interesting matchup at Kingston this coming Sunday. All the activities will start at 1 o'clock as Duxbury, undefeated at 4-0, visits the Silver Lake Warriors, who are also 4-0. And speaking of Pop Warner football, let's talk a little bit about the Plymouth South Jaguar program. They went on the road this past week. They went down to Hull to take on a pirate program. And you know what? All three teams came away with impressive victories from the Jaguar program. So with the win at the midget level, T.J. White's team is now 3-1. With a win at the might level, the... Plymouth South Mites are now 3-1, and, and it was the Pee Wees that got their first victory of the season. So all that hard work has paid off. They've broken things up. They've kept the mistakes to a minimum, and say they, they see the results of a very positive effort. And they'll be back home this week as they take on East Bridgewater at Plymouth South Stadium. Uh, let's talk about Pembroke's youth football program, also known as the Titans, just like the high school program. All right, it was the Mites that got their very first victory of the season last week as they went up against a team from Hanson. So congratulations to those youngsters. The Pee Wees are 2-2 two and two on the season. They're under the direction of the president of the organization, Will Maluski. Okay, they'll take on East Bridgewater this week. They did have an interesting game this, week, this year against Dennis Yarmouth, which was 26-24. It was D.Y. scoring on a 40-yard pass play with just about one minute left 
So that's the difference in a two and two season or a three and one season. And the Midgets got a nice victory, knocking off Dennis Yarmouth. So they'll be back in action this coming weekend, and they're going to try to improve on a one and three mark. But they have lots and lots of interest in that Pembroke program known as the Titans, just one youth football program in Pembroke. I told you a couple of weeks ago that's what they did over in Duxbury after many years having two programs like the town of Plymouth has. That's the same situation over in Pembroke. And now they're down to one program, so it's only going to benefit that high school down the road. All right, let's talk, if we can, about the youngest level. They're called the Mighty Mites out in Pembroke. And you know what? They had 34 players sign up, biggest sign up ever, and they're actually getting very good results. These youngsters are loving it. They're very anxious week after week to have a game. They don't keep score, but they know who wins the game by how they dominate throughout the contest. So congratulations to that Pembroke program, getting an awful lot of interest and youngsters involved as they continue to grow. All right, we're just about out of time. We'd like to thank you for yours and invite you back with us once again next week for another edition of the video sports page. For Will McKinney, Matt Willett, and Rich Goulart, I've been your host, Carl Pratt. Health and wisdom from the video sports page.